number of years ago, there was, uh, some of you might have heard of like LimeWire and Napster and so on and so forth. Well, there was a, I think it was a Chinese man, a young man, maybe about 17 years old, and he developed this internet te technology called Nutella. Nutella was called. He has since committed suicide, but his gift to the world was uh, file sharing. Uh, anything that could be placed on a computer in a digital form could be shared with anybody in the world. Not like through Napster, where it had to go through a central agency, but it could go computer to computer. Six imagine all the billions of, or millions of computers with people being able to share freely files. And to me, without a central monitoring agency like McNapster had, they shut down Napster, uh, the music industry and so on and so forth. But but basically what this, this uh, young man invented was just a symbol of where this is all heading. If there are no private minds and no private thoughts, and there is no such thing as ownership, and only the thoughts of God can be shared, and you want to share them as freely as you can, because the more you give them away, the more you remember them for yourself, then you can see where this is, this kind of uh, puts a hole in the free enterprise system, in communism, socialism, and any other form of economics, it's just called free, 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 you know, and and it reminds me a bit of, of uh, in the Matrix, you know, there's that scene where uh, Morpheus is helping Neo train his mind and they're doing all of the, the martial arts thing and, and uh, Neo's like saying, I know what you're trying to do with me and he's I'm trying to free your mind. It, it's the scene when he leaps over across the building. And that's really what the message of the Holy Spirit is. It's here to free your mind from every concept of the world so that you can come back to the kingdom of heaven where, where everything is free. You are created in, as a free spirit with free will and free love. Uh, not like in the 60's <laughs> generation free love, but you know, pure, pure, free divine love was given freely. And, and the only way that you can know who you are is by extending that love freely, just as freely as it was given to you. So that's why Jesus would say things in the Bible like, you know, freely you have received, now freely give, he would tell the apostles. So that's been something that I've been sharing, that's like a keynote I've been ringing for the last uh, 17 years during the travel. It's been, freely you have received, now freely give. And in this world of scarcity and lack and possession, there's nothing more striking than the joy of true freedom, and there's much, nothing more that stands out in this world than, than this gift, free gift, because everything seems to have a price in this world. Everything costs something. And my instructions at the beginning were to, you know, never charge money, to just accept donations and to even to tell people, okay, and the donations will get used to travel more, share more, make more materials, like Christian was just saying, you know, get it out there for people. So that people, you know, who, who would say, oh, I'm financially, I can't afford it, it's like, fine, then take it. <laughs> Go ahead and take it. Uh, it's for your joy. And of course, being down in South America, you know, countries like Colombia, where you know, 60% of the population lives like on two dollars a day, you know, or being down in Mexico, you, it's a whole different perspective on the human condition when you see people that are living on a couple dollars a day, you know, there's really no kind of touchstone for that up here in the United States or in, in, in Europe or whatever, because it's maybe parts of Europe, but other, much of Europe and the United States and Australia, is, it's so, there's so much what seems to be material abundance, there's really no kind of a context for that kind of life, even though there's millions of people that, that live that way. I know in Brazil it's very devotional, spiritual, but it's, you know, it's very different context, I'm sure, coming over here from Brazil. But um, I think the thing I like, too, is there's a part in the Matrix where Morpheus tells Neo, the Matrix is all around you, and he says it's the digital projection of your mental self. Uh, an interesting phrase. And so now with everything going digital, it's like, well, it's really all been digital. It's always been digital. It's just that the ego made it seem like some of it was physical and some of it was digital. We have now 
new technologies that we're calling virtual reality, you know, where entire, you know, you can put on the goggles or you can use the computers and so forth, and it's like a generated uh, themes, um, kind of like in Star Trek, if you've ever watched Star Trek, the holodeck would be kind of an example of virtual reality. And now in the comic books and the virtual reality writings and writings from psychology about lucid dreaming, more and more it's the teachings of the Course are like, are breaking through in, in many, many different areas as people start to realize that, wow, what's the difference between my nighttime dreams and my daytime dreams? What's the difference between fantasies and the world? And what Jesus has taught us is that, that there is no difference, that, that all of the world is fantasies. And so, when you start to take that in, then it's like, okay, is there a helpful use for fantasies then? And the Holy Spirit says, yes, I have a helpful use for fantasies to inspire, to bless, and ultimately to lead you to a leaping off point where you can go into the stillness and let go of the fantasies entirely and come back to reality, to the kingdom of heaven, to pure spirit, which is our natural state. And the only state in which we can know who we are, who God is, and we have creations. We can only remember our creations when we're returned to the state of the kingdom of heaven. It's like Jesus is like, they're waiting for you. They're like cheering you on. You could do it. <laughs> Come home, remember. Uh, but it's not like a, a coming home in a linear way either. No matter where you seem to go in this world or what you seem to do, that really doesn't have anything to do with the, with the home, remembering of home. It's a very inward experience. Like uh, when we were listening to Alyssa's song, you know, everyone was just you know, kind of sinking inward and inward into an inner experience. And, and then Alyssa, at the end of one, she just flopped back almost like, yeah, the body can just <laughs> relax, you know, it's not even like a song. It's more like a prayer or it's an invitation for all of us to, to go deep into that experience. And to give yourself permission to do that, you know, in this seeming busy world of so much to do, to be able to say, I'm worth it just to relax, just to give myself time to meditate and sink inward. And uh, I feel grateful that we've had these cats around our house too over the years. They just lay on their backs, paws in the air. It doesn't matter, you know, it's like, you know, I think I remember back in 2001, it's like I came home from a meditation, somebody had the television on and they're like, the World Trade Centers have collapsed. and smoke and plumes of dust and everything, and there's tripod, you know, laying on the back. Please, do you people still believe in buildings and terrorists? And it's like, just kind of slowly rolling your eyes over, like, can you turn the noise off, please? It's a distraction. Uh, you know, and, and meanwhile, the world out is they're shutting down the airlines and they're putting the President of the United States under a bunker and everything, and tripod with a little nub, three legs in it, and a nub in it. Oh, I've had enough of this. And, but it just gives you a different perspective on, on everything, like, like silence and stillness is natural, and Shakespeare did call it, much ado about nothing. You know, that was his play for the world, you know. And I remember Shakespeare had that famous line, all the world's a stage and everyone must play their part. The Holy Spirit reinterpreted even Shakespeare to say, all the world's a stage, and divine mind can play no part. That really we have to give up this idea of part whole, you know, the sum is greater than, the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, so the old saying goes. But the whole is real and the parts are not. And when you've been identified with the parts, it's really difficult, you know, it's, it's unnatural to be identified with the parts.